Hello and welcome. My name is Chad Trapeau. I'm on the systems engineering team here at Avi Networks. Today I'm going to show you how quickly we can stand up application services in a multi-cloud environment using Avi Networks. So today I'm going to play the part as application developer who's been tasked with deploying and delivering my application to my end users in a multi-cloud environment, which include AWS, Azure, and VMware. Now for me as an application developer and owner, Avi simplifies this task by giving me a single REST API call to the Avi controller for application services to allow for proper deployment of my application. The Avi controller through Cloud Connector is already peered with AWS Azure and vCenter, which allows me to dynamically set up infrastructure and deploy my application services, dramatically simplifying my multi-cloud deployment. So now let's get into the demo itself. I'm going to start by logging into my Avi controller. What we see from the application dashboard is that we have zero virtual services configured. If I look at the controller from an infrastructure perspective, we see that we are not yet running any of our service engine load balancer in any of our cloud environments. The Avi controller, though, is peered through Cloud Connector with AWS, Azure Cloud, as well as my vCenter API on-premise. Now I'm going to get back to my task of deploying applications across multi-cloud environments. In this case, I'm going to leverage the automation and the API on the Avi controller through Ansible playbooks. I'm going to run this Ansible playbook here specifically for the AWS environment where I have my application running as an auto scale group. What we see through the request of the Ansible playbook is that we're configuring pools, virtual services, as well as all of the application services and features I need to properly deploy my application and bring it out to my end users. What this also triggers behind the scenes is an auto provisioning operation handled by the Avi controller, which is detected. I do not have any service engines running inside of AWS. We see here the application has popped up and with the shield denotes that we're applying the web application firewall engine to this application. If I take a look at the infrastructure now inside of the controller, we see that I have actually provisioned two service engines, both running in AWS for ActiveActive. Active. Now what this looks like inside of the EC2 console, if we refresh here, is that we actually have those service engine instances in an initialization state. In this case, I've chose the C5 large, which will give me the processing power I need for this application. And also, too, this is done through 100% REST API integration, not requiring any CloudFormation templates or any templates at all. While those provision, let's take a look at the application services I made in my API call via Ansible Playbook. I requested an external floating IP address to make my application accessible to users on the internet. I've also requested ports 443 for SSL and port 80 for HTTP, as well as a couple of pools that sit behind my virtual service representing my app. Here is my checkbox requesting that external IP as well as my subnet inside of my VPC where my virtual servers live. We also see the domain name that is automatically programmed into Route 53 once this VS comes online. If we look at the application profile and how we handle traffic for this application, we see my API also made an SSL Everywhere request. This dramatically simplifies things like HTTP to HTTPS redirects, HSTS headers, and other security headers required for delivering my application. If I look inside the policies for this virtual service, we also see that I'm leveraging content switching, where requests of HTTP method post and my URIs of slash app2 will be sent to a different pool, app2 pool, on the back end. The last component here is our web application firewall. I am actually running every request for this application through the Avi WAF so that it can detect exploits. We see now that the application has come online, meaning that our service engines are fully provisioned, fully connected to the network inside the VPC, and I can begin testing traffic against my application. Here we see the two service engines, which have come to a full health state and connected back into the controller, now hosting my application or my virtual service. I can actually copy this public IP address here, start to validate with some requests. We see my HTTP to HTTPS redirect is working as expected. 
and I'll go ahead and accept on this behalf. In this case, I've now hit my test application that I have running inside of AWS. If I pop into the virtual service and I look at our request level logs, we see we have every request that came in from my test client. If we drill down further into this particular request for the home page, we see a lot of interesting data, including my source IP address, my system country, the SSL handshake I negotiated. We see we're maintaining persistence for this application. And we also give a breakdown of how long it took for us to service this request inside of AWS. We see here hovering over the virtual service that it has my external IP address, my RSA and EC certs are both bound for SSL, and I am active active across two service engines inside of AWS. Now in this case, I'm manually going to trigger a scale out event, meaning I need additional ADC capacity for this application. I'm going to go ahead and click this scale out button here, making the request to the Avi controller saying I need additional service engines for processing this application traffic. If we look at the infrastructure, we see that Avi has indeed spun up a third service engine, which is going to be active for this application. And again, back in our console, we see the initialization of the service engine instance. We now go back to infrastructure and see all of our service engines have come online. We go back into our virtual service, which needed additional ADC capacity. And we validate that this application now is running active, active, active across three service engines. So the platform is extremely elastic in how we scale up and down based on capacity needs of the backend pool, as well as Avi itself. I'm also going to send a curl here to validate some of my content switching configuration. In this case, I'm going to be sending a post request to the virtual service with my appropriate API. I now pop back into the logs for the given application. And what I demonstrated here is that in the initial request, we went to app one web server pool auto scale group. If we take a look at the post I just leveraged through curl, we see that we've been content switched to app two pool. And all of this has happened based on the request policy I have set on the virtual service. All automated, all through the Avi API. I'm now going to go to the second cloud I need to stand up my application in, which would be Azure. Same workflow here. I'm going to go ahead and provision my virtual services, my pools, and all of my application services required to properly bring my application online in Azure. I make the same API call to the same Avi controller and go through a very similar process of what we saw at AWS. In this case, my application has been brought up with my web application firewall protection on. And in this case, again, we had zero infrastructure inside of Azure. You see that in my API request, I have again asked for an external floating IP address to allow access to my application running in Azure. And what we see inside of our infrastructure dashboard is that we are now provisioning two service engine load balancers in Azure, where we already have our three running in AWS. If I do a refresh of the activities here inside of my console for Azure, we see that the Avi admin slash our controller has made all of the proper configurations with network interfaces and IPs to bring our service engine load balancers online. And we actually see those service engines being deployed inside of our Azure console. If we take a look at the names here and then back reference, here are our service engines inside of our Azure console. The next step we're going to do, now that the application is online, is we're going to go through our validation testing of our application inside of Azure. Again, I'm going to copy the public IP address here and just do a quick browser request here into my application at Azure. And again, we see our HTTP to HTTPS redirect, which we made in our API call via Ansible playbook. And I've gotten to my test application now inside of Azure. Now, what's great about this is if we actually go into our virtual service fronting our Azure application, we get the same level of detail and insight as we do 
in AWS. So this is extremely powerful in giving me a consistent visibility into my application and end user performance across any cloud in a consistent manner. So simplifying the tool set across multi-cloud is another advantage of running Avi networks. In this case, the third component is on-premise. So I'm gonna run again another Ansible playbook here, which is going to make a request for application services inside of VMware. We run through the tasks of provisioning VSs and pools, all the appropriate features and functions for my application to bring this application online inside of VMware. We finish off the playbook, and as we saw in the other two clouds, the Avi controller automatically detects that there's no service engine load balancers running in any of those clouds, auto provisions those, automatically applies the port groups and IP addresses based on the virtual service and pool, and what we see is the service engine spinning up inside of our vCenter console, as we can see right here. So now let's take a look at this inside of the Avi controller. So as we see here, the application is still waiting for the infrastructure to be provisioned inside of VMware, right? So if we take a look at that, let's go into the infrastructure. We see our AWS service engines, we see our Azure service engines, and now we see coming online our VMware service engines. All right, so let's go back into our applications and what we see is once we get the vNix and everything set, the application comes up and it's available inside of VMware now as well. So I can quickly uh, grab my virtual service IP address here, just do a quick validation via curl to make sure that I can send a web request there. And indeed, I get my HTTPS redirect. So as you've seen, I've now deployed applications in a multi-cloud fashion, giving public IP addresses, requesting application services, and I have my application running in AWS Azure as well as VMware. So thank you for checking out my demo. If you're facing challenges of hybrid cloud or multi-cloud and need a fully automated distributed application delivery system, check out Avi Networks.